Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so geometric series then. So we mentioned this during the theory of geometric se sequences. There also exists the sum to n terms of a geometric sequence, okay? And they are all in the log tables. Let me just find them. Okay, so we've already done the TN one where uh, any term TN is equal to AR n to the minus one. So this is the formula I'm looking at now, which is SN, the sum of the first n terms. And you can see it's equal to A times one minus R to the power of N over one minus R, where A is the first term, R is the common ratio. Okay, and then just gonna draw your attention to the log tables. There is also this formula down the bottom, S to infinity, and it's A over one minus R. And an important note here, given R is less than one, okay? And it's the modulus of R. So in normal English, that is the same as minus one is less than R is less than one, okay? So it's saying the sign doesn't matter. So it's actually when R is between minus one and one. Okay, so if I can go back to the theory where we looked at convergent and divergent series, what it's saying is that if a limit to infinity exists, then we can use that sum to infinity um, formula, okay? Because remember, a geometric series converges if the common ratio is between minus one and one. If it's not between that, then the series is divergent, okay? So it only works for convergent series. Okay, so the sum to n terms of a geometric sequence, same one in the log tables, is Sn is equal to a times one minus r to the power of n over one minus r. Okay, and then that sum to infinity is given by sum to infinity is equal to a time a over one minus r. Okay, and this formula comes up a lot in exam questions. So we're going to see that quite a bit in the next class. I just want to take you through, I suppose, the proof or, or, or where this comes out of. So starting with this formula, where does this one come out of? Okay, so what I'm saying is, if we get the limit, okay, as n tends to infinity of this particular sequence, okay? So in other words, what, what I'm saying is building on the limits we've just been doing, as n gets really large, as n approaches infinity, what happens this formula, okay? So it's the limit as n tends to infinity of a times one minus r to the power of n over one minus r. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to multiply in that a first, okay? So it's the same thing as the limit as n tends to infinity of a times a r to the power of n over one minus r. Okay, so I didn't do anything special there. I just multiplied in the A. So A by one is A, A by R to the power of N is A R to the power of N. Okay, I'm then going to split this into its fractions. Okay, because if I have uh, three minus two over five, you know I can also write that as three fifths minus two fifths. Okay, it's the same thing. So that's what I mean by splitting splitting the fractions. I'm going to do that with the one minus r here. So it'll be a over one minus r and a r to the power of n over one minus r. So let me do that now. So that's equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of a over one minus r minus the limit as n tends to infinity of the other piece of it. So a r to the power of n over one minus r. Okay, now we know, write this down, 
we know that the limit as n tends to infinity of r to the power of n equals zero when r is less than one. Okay, so if your common ratio is less than one, then your number is going to get smaller. Okay, so just to give you an example of, of, of this in, in a sequence, okay, if r was equal to a half and I started off at five, for, mm, let's take an even number, let's take the number four, then I'm going to half it, two, I'm going to half it, one, I'm going to half it, I'm going to half it, half it, half it, half it. And can you see the number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller? Um, and eventually will approach zero. Okay, so for as long as that common ratio is less than one or to the power of n will approach zero. Okay, so let me write that in. So I'll be left with the limit as n tends to infinity of a over one minus r minus the limit as n tends to infinity of a times zero over one minus r. Okay, you know anything times zero is going to be zero and zero divided by anything is zero. Okay, so this whole thing is equal to zero. Okay, hence we are left with this one here. Okay, so this bit goes, so we're left just with this. Okay, so let me write it down in maths language. The limit as n tends to infinity of Sn, which was equal to this, the limit as n tends to infinity of a times one minus r to the power of n over one minus r is in fact equal to just a over one minus r. So that is the sum to infinity of a geometric series. Okay, but that is why this note is here. Okay, the common ratio must be less than one because it's only when it's less than one that this term here approaches zero and therefore makes this whole bit um, be zero. So that is the, the, the proving or, or deriving this formula given this. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.